everybody, it's Rhino, and I am here today outside of Cinderella's Royal Table. I am joined by Craig and Erica, and we are, of course, going to be going in and dining at this highly sought after table service restaurant. It's got a little character meet and greet inside of here. It's a lot of fun. Before we get inside and start this review, I want to remind everybody that this and everything that we do here is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts in helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation when you book with them. It costs you nothing extra on your trip and you help support the channel and all the content that we produce here. So normally at this part, I'd say we're going to go inside, but here's the little tip and tricks uh, I need to say right now is that we showed up right when our table was ready. So we're actually recording this intro after we've already dined. I'm not going to say anything about the dining experience. We're going to save that for this, but I do want to say a uh, shout out to Madeline, one of the cast members that was inside of the uh, welcome area, the foyer, if you will. Um, and uh, she, on our way out, uh, the whole area was kind of empty and we were taking a lot of pictures and videos. And she pointed out some fun little, like, uh, little tidbits of knowledge in there for us. First of all, we did notice uh, when you're looking at the fireplace right next to where you meet Cinderella on the way in, which you will meet Cinderella on the way in, she was wonderful, um, you're gonna notice uh, Jacques and Guscus just above the fireplace on your left. It was super cute. I'm glad that we noticed it. Madeline also tipped us off that all of the coats of arm that you're going to see inside of this room, they all represent the families of the Imagineers who helped design and uh, create this experience in there, which was really cool. I forgot to mention another fun little fact in here is after you meet Cinderella, you can either take the stairs up or the elevator. And if you do take the elevator, you'll notice it's, uh, it's going to be round. Madeline let Craig know that um, that is, uh, in fact, it's a circular elevator because it accommodates Cinderella's gown in there. So that's why it's circular. So fun little tip you'll notice as soon as you get in there and then on your way out. You also, guess what you got? A little party favor. Boom, magic wand. Boom, sword. Madeline was nice and let me take one of each, so. Um, but there's fun, there's, so like when you're going in here, don't just like go in, get seated. Have a little chat with some people. I spoke to another cast member upstairs, worked there 43 years, she told me, um, and like kind of told me about the history of the restaurant. So ask questions, chit chat with people on the way in, and it's really going to uh, inform your experience in here a little bit. So now that I've kind of said all of that, why don't we actually get to the dining experience and check out what it looks like inside of here and take you through the whole, the whole ordeal. stormed the castle, breached the perimeter. We are now seated in the dining room upstairs in Cinderella's Royal Table. Um, and honestly, it's a little smaller than I even expected it to be. I had heard it was small, but it's a very tight dining room. Um, and while we've been sitting here, we currently have several of uh, the very famous princesses walking around. We have Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. We've got Jasmine from Aladdin, we have uh, Ariel from Little Mermaid, and I believe Snow White from the film Snow White is also bopping around on here. So um, we got seated, and um, we are the only table without children, I believe, which is fine. That's fine, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I just wanna let everybody know that this meal right here, Cinderella's Royal Table, $79 plus tax plus tip, a lot of money. Um, it's a prefixed menu, um, similar to how Be Our Guest 
is. And um, so you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. They kind of all order at once. And um, so we have done that, made our selections. We've gotten our appetizers. For me, I went with the grilled jumbo shrimp. Excuse me, the chilled jumbo shrimp. I can't read, it's all fancy writing. Um, that is uh, three pieces of jumbo shrimp that are served with avocado mousse, crispy peppers, and a little micro, micro cilantro. Um, it was pretty good, it was a little salty. Um, but they, they're, they're pretty, like, really decent sized shrimp on there. I normally, I don't think it's like the normal thing I would have gotten, but you know what? I wanted to take a little, go a little curveball today and try something different because we're upstairs, we're in the castle, and why not, right? Nothing says elegance at Disney like a bucket of shrimp. So I got the soup of the day to start with, which was a butternut squash soup. And the way it is, it's already plant-based and I've already tried it. It is so good. And when you smell it, it smells like the holidays and it has that nice like Thanksgiving type of taste to it. And I absolutely love it. And it had like little croutons in there. It was just so good. Um, I really enjoyed it. But the bowl, let me show you. She's like oddly shaped, very big, okay? Uh, for the soup that was inside. And I just think it was a little extravagant, um, but what's inside is worth it. I'm gonna also fill in the gaps on a couple things that Rhino talked about. Uh, he mentioned that our lunch here was $79 per adult plus tax and gratuity. For children ages three to nine, it is $47 per child plus tax and gratuity. Uh, the lunch pricing is the exact same pricing for uh, the dinner service that you can experience here. So whether you do lunch or dinner, doesn't matter, it's all the same. For breakfast though, because we have to mention that, they do all three meals here. Breakfast is $65 per adult plus tax and gratuity. And for children, it's $39. So now that that's out of the way, uh, my it's my first time up here ever, so I'm actually blown away. It's way darker than I thought, but also then super bright because of the windows. Uh, small, but it's very charming inside. Like it feels like they haven't done a lot to this restaurant over the years, and I'm digging that. For my appetizer, um, oh, before I even get there, Cinderella that we met as we were walking in, she was fantastic. Uh, it just, it really set the mood for the meal that was to come, and uh, it was it was just the perfect start. For my appetizer now, I got the braised beef, carrot and coriander puree, shallot jam, and horseradish. Gremolata. The braised beef was okay. I mean, it was flavorful. It was seasoned well. It was very, very fatty, which that's okay with braised beef. It's all going to fall apart, but it was like, it also wasn't really tearing well. So I had to kind of chew through it. And in terms of everything under it, the puree didn't have a lot of flavor. I was hoping with horseradish that there would be a little bit of a zip to it. It just, it was, it was good. It was, it wasn't the greatest thing I've ever had. Um, but it also, it wasn't the worst. And for an appetizer, it was surprisingly filling. Um, I'm going all beef this meal though, so that'll be a spoiler for my entree. So yeah, I'm in for a ride up here. Wait, I mean, you know, I can never make up my mind between just one color as well. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, yeah. Oh, you like it? You know, it was a birthday present, of course, so oh. that means it's one of my favorites. Mm. I think it turned out better than the birthday cake they made for me. I mean, I, I've seen some pictures of that birthday cake in it, yeah. <laughs> it's a little tilted, but exactly. it's charming. The is doing a lot of work there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, they've been practicing their baking quite a bit, too, but I still prefer their use of their magic wand, yes. you know. <laughs> like when a recipe calls for flour, they always pick one fresh out of oh the ground to use. That means it smells sweet. <laughs> it tastes sweet. Mm. I like, I like how they fold in the eggs, is oh, my favorite. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives the cake a little crunch, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're on here somewhere, I know you are. Oh, my friends. Oh, my goodness, I think my seven little friends would like that very much. Yes, oh, yes. Would yeah. you even like to join me for a portrait? I would love to if that's okay. I like to do a little self portrait. Thank you very much. For my entree, I went with the sustainable catch of the day, which actually, um, they originally said it was grouper, but it turned out being um, snapper, which is fine. Um, it was served with marble potatoes, bok choy, and a chimichurri sauce. And it was that kind where it like comes baked in a bag. 
Um, I will say, I feel like when I was thinking chimichurri sauce, I was thinking the kind that you get and it comes like really like slathered like on a steak and I thought that sounds really interesting. I felt like because it was all cooked in a bag, it got all like steamed and watered down and I don't know that I had a lot of the chimichurri flavor in there. The fish was well cooked and well seasoned, like very well seasoned. Um, and the bok choy was, was in there, was very good. Um, but the marbled potatoes were like sliced, like way, way for thin, like so thin. Um, it was okay. It wasn't bad. I just, I wasn't as in love. It was one of those things where I was eating it and I was like, you know, maybe I should have tried the grilled chicken. Not a bad choice, but one where I'm like, mm, just okay for me. So I got the Parisian gnocchi, which comes with seasonal vegetables, a celery root puree, and a vegetable demi-glaze. And it seems like the current seasonal vegetable is a snap pea because I have basically finished but I still have this many snap peas left. Um, it was more like snap peas with some gnocchi, uh, but I do like the flavor that was in this dish a lot. Um, I just wish there was a more balance between the vegetables and the amount of gnocchi that was on the plate. It's my only concern, but I really enjoyed the flavors and the mushrooms that were in here were cooked really well, and I really enjoyed that. Again, just too many, it's too many. You just gotta scale it back a little bit. Maybe, maybe do opposite. Do the amount of gnocchi that was the snap peas and then put less snap pea in there. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed the flavors. That's my only critique that I have on this one. For my entree, I chose the grilled tenderloin of beef with uh, potatoes, roasted seasonal vegetables, which were asparagus and carrots and a house-made steak sauce. Well. The house-made steak sauce was all under the potatoes, so it was kind of impossible to get any of that with the steak. There was a little bit under the steak too, but it wasn't really uh, portioned out well, just in my opinion. I also, you know, I don't need any sauce with my steak if it's cooked right. And I will say, this steak was cooked perfectly. I ordered it medium rare, and it definitely was medium rare if not, but a bit slightly rare as well too, which, that's always going to be the way that I want it. And I I have a lot to compare it to, though, because we just ate at Be Our Guest recently. But then also, I just ate at California Grill and got a filet there. And the filet I had here was cooked better than the one I had at California Grill. So that says a lot. Uh, this filet was actually a little bit under-seasoned, though, specifically compared to Be Our Guest. I thought Be Our Guest was way more flavorful. This one was still just like a really nice steak. It just, it was lacking a little bit of a pop. Uh, the potatoes were super, super good. I mean, they were like a potato au gratin. Just really, really nice. The asparagus was extremely thin, but you know, that and the carrot that was on there, it all added up. Uh, it, this felt like if you had this steak dinner anywhere else, you would you'd probably still be impressed with it. And for here, I, I was still happy with it. You know, it's not... It's definitely not the best steak I've ever had at Disney, uh, but it's also not the worst. So right now, I'm kind of in between. I've gotta, gotta just keep taking it all in. I'll figure it out. You know, I did bring Abu with me on the magic carpet, so there's a chance he might try to come over here and cause a little trouble. See, I didn't know, what, where is Raja? Uh, How is Raja's Raja? back at the palace. Okay. Knowing Raja, he's probably taking a little nap right about now. A little cat nap? You must be a big fan of tigers. Oh, yes, I am, yes. Well, you're welcome to fly to Agrabah to come meet Raja. Oh, I would love to. He loves to make new friends, and so does Abu. <laughs> she combed it with a dingle hopper just before we got in here, yeah. too. Did you yeah. dip it in split ink, too? No. <laughs> Good try, <Carla. laughs> Absolutely, why don't you? For the finale of the meal, I went with the Jack and Gus, which is the cheesecake with seasonal flavors and garnish. And uh, it was a vanilla cheesecake. Apparently our server said that that flavor can change. 
I thought it was a pretty solid cheesecake. I'm not gonna lie. I, I think for me, it was the best part of the meal. It was very good. And I know it's like, ah, cheesecake, whatever, safe bet. But I don't know, cheesecake can be gross sometimes. To put, like, sometimes it's too dense, sometimes it's too light. I thought this one was like right up my alley. I thought the crumble on it was really nice. And um, when it says seasonal flavors, I don't, I mean, I guess that's the vanilla part of it, but like, it was a little bit of like, um, it reminds me of that episode of Friends where uh, Joey will say like, uh, he didn't know what raspberry coolie was. And it kind of had that, that like kind of vague ghost drippings on it of flavor. Um, I do, before I pass this off to anybody else, want to say that um, during the meal when we got sat, um, they gave us these wishing stars, right? So there are these like little plastic things and they said that um, at some point during the meal, we were gonna have to make a wish and do a whole thing. And so it happened while all the princesses were here, there was a, a I, what I imagine at night, you can see a little bit better, but there was a thing where there was an announcement that came on and it kind of had directions. I'm definitely losing my hearing as I'm getting older. So I struggled to really hear what they were saying, but I could, See all the princesses were saying the same thing that was being said overhead, but you're supposed to basically have this and make hold it tight and like make a wish, and um, and that was cool. And then the server came around with these like little little Cindy, Cindy all getting all done up. Look at little Gus Gus down there, little Jock. And then on the back we have all of our visiting princesses autographs on here, so that way they were able to get around and you didn't you didn't feel like you got you got stiffed on the autograph. Am I right? So. Um, so that was fun, but they had little lights that like flickered in the ceiling. For me, it looked like the fire alarm going off, but um, but I think at night it was probably a little more magical. But honestly, I was trying to think, would I rather be here during the night or during the day? But I've enjoyed the lighting up here with the big the big windows behind me and everything like that. So I'm I don't feel like I'm longing for the evening. So my overall thoughts here, for me personally, the, like I said in the beginning, this meal was $79 plus tip and DAX. And um, the only thing that I have like comparatively, like, like I think on the same level of like dining and then what you're getting out of it, um, I think is Be Our Guest, which we did recently. Um, and I know that there's not as many character meet and greet opportunities because it's really just the beast going around there. If somebody said to me, which one would you like to do again, right, this second? For me, I would choose Be Our Guest. It was a little bit less money. I mean, it was like $12 less, because I think that was 67 plus tax. But everything I ate over there was like off. Like, I still think about the pork chop I had over there. Everything I had here was good, but I don't know that it was memorable for me in terms of being like, I loved it. I'm so happy I chose this thing. And maybe it was just me and my choices today. Like, cause like I said, none of it was bad. None of it was offensive. Everything was cooked well. Um, but I just don't, I don't know that I walk away with the price thinking like, yeah. But I am very happy that I got to come in here. I mean, part of it is I'm inside of Cinderella's castle right now. And I'm like, when is that ever gonna happen again? This was a bucket list item for me, like I said. So it's like, I am very, I'm not gonna leave here disappointed that we did it or let down. I'm still happy that I got to do this. So my dessert was a fun time. I got the coffee uh, pot de creme and uh, I hated it. The texture was so weird and it just tasted like they put a bunch of coffee grinds in water. It was disgusting. <laughs> Filth. We all it tried it. Not good, but the flower on it was very cute. But I did tell our wonderful server that I was not, like, I just, I couldn't with that texture. And the other plant-based option is this, uh, is this lemon sorbet. And she brought that out, it had blueberries on it. But she did say that this happens quite often, that people will order that coffee dessert and they get it and they're like, actually, I don't like it. Uh, she's like, so they get a lot of returns on that one for the sorbet, so if you are plant-based, um, or have any dietary restrictions, just, just order that instead of the coffee. It wasn't the best thing. But overall, I feel like I'm in the same boat. Um, as much as I looked forward to this, I love character dining, I love meeting the princesses, but I think food-wise, I wish I could put like Be Our Guest and this in one, because I could pick different things from the menu that I wanted, but I would have to say Be Our Guest in that perspective. I would rather eat there than here. Um, I do want to see this at night, 
but I, I really did like it. Meeting the princesses, it made my whole day. I love interacting with them. And it, for me, I see this as if you're celebrating something special, you're doing a proposal, or it's a very important birthday, or you're only gonna come to Disney once, do this. You're eating in the castle. You get to see four different characters, Cinderella at the beginning. You get to make a wish inside the castle. That's the stuff that makes this, in my eyes, worth it. Um, that's just where I stand on this. But if I could go back to Be Our Guest over the food, yes. I just wish I could meet Belle at Be Our Guest. That's my only thing. For my dessert, I went with the signature option because that was the last one to choose after Rhino and Erica selected, and that was the Clock Strikes 12. It was a dark chocolate mousse with a caramel and crunchy praline center served with chocolate sauce and hazelnut gelato. Okay, the description of this is kind of throwing me off because it definitely was a mousse on the inside and uh, it almost like had the outside texture of like a tort, but then the soft mousse on the inside and then what was like a cake base to it all. Uh, I did not get caramel or crunchy on the center at all. There was like a crunchy praline on top of the hazelnut gelato that was served on the side, which was excellent, uh, but not inside the cake. Inside the cake, it was just completely soft. And uh, because of it being a mousse more than a cake, I actually really dug this one. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of chocolate, so I was kind of bummed that I was left with this one, but it was, it was the dark chocolate just kind of hit the spot on this and balanced perfectly with the hazelnut gelato. So you kind of had that, that softer, sweeter side mixed with that, that kind of bitter chocolate with it. And yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of mousse. So I actually really enjoyed the ending to this dessert, but much like Rhino and Erica, I'm struggling with this one because comparing it closely to Be Our Guest, since that is such a good comparison, especially in Magic Kingdom, Be Our Guest wins on food by far. The, not that this was bad. However, this atmosphere is so, so cool. And throw in the princesses too. It's, this is really something special. I also love Akershus in Norway. And that's also, you know, get your princess fix there. So I would probably... If you wanted the princess experience, you know, maybe maybe look to a different option, but I don't know. This kind of just, this has a lot going for it between the interior and then the food wasn't that bad and the princesses. So it, it might in fact be with it. To talk about the price though, we've talked about it enough. When I booked this, I had to pay for the meal upfront. So for the three of us, it charged $288 and change on my credit card. I can't find the exact amount and it hasn't processed through, so I can't tell you what it was. Um, but that is the meal plus gratuity already in there. Oh, I didn't realize Snow White was going past me. That's pretty cool. Uh, so that's what got charged to my credit card and that broke down to about $96 for each of us, just for the base meal. And then of course you get a, a soft drink or iced tea milk, coffee included in the price of the meal. And we are annual pass holders, so uh, they did say that the credit card used to book the meal with will get a, a small refund back for the price difference. It's not something that happens automatically, but it happens like, they think she said once a day or a couple times a day, they'll go and they'll process all of those where they'll put money back on the card that you originally booked it on. So there is an annual pass discount and Disney Vacation Club discount for it too. So once you factor that in, I mean, it's not gonna make a big enough difference to all of a sudden say, absolutely come here. But listen, the bottom line is you know who you are. If you've got kids, especially, you know, little princes, little princesses, that this is something they would get a kick out of, it's gonna be a memory that's gonna last forever. So you kind of have to recommend it based on that. And you're not gonna get a bad meal here too while your kids are having fun seeing all the princesses and taking it all in. So I recommend it. I can only imagine how awesome it is watching it, watching like the fireworks outside at night. Uh, I wish we booked it for then, but we're here in the afternoon because that's what we could get. I don't regret it one bit, but hey, maybe one time we'll come back, get to see fireworks, see it all the way that I feel like is the right way. But I'm happy for now. I'm definitely happy. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up 
you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and leave comments, questions, and uh, video suggestions in the comments section. And if you're listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating review if you can. And if you want to support us more, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. But that's it for our dining review of Cinderella's Royal Table. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again real soon with another Disney dining review. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay hungry.